Hello, Sillaholics, and welcome to Sillaholics Anonymous. I am Shakia. If this is your first time here and you have never viewed any of my content, I do hope that you enjoy the contents of this video and will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use offsets and shadows. If you have the basic edition, you won't have the shadow feature that comes with design edition or above, but you can easily create them using offsets and your transparency tool for your color palette. So I'm going to show you how to do it if you have basic or if you have one of the upgrades. It doesn't matter if you are working with a shape or with text. And we're going to go ahead and just fill those with color. All right, I'm going to make a duplicate of this so I can kind of go back to it. And also, let's just move over here. I just like to kind of design, not on the design page. I feel like I just have a lot more freedom when I'm in the just open gray area. So the offset panel is this star right here on your left, your right hand side. If you click on that, you're going to get an offset uh, window up here. You have your offset, which takes it to the outside. Internal makes it go to the inside. Your distance is totally up to you. It will vary depending on how small or how large the image is when you do the offset. So we're just gonna go ahead and put an offset on this. If you want it to be nice and big and thick around it, you can choose that. That is totally up to you and the design that you are creating. I'm going to take this down to maybe like 0 0.05. Okay. Um, if whatever you make it, if the lines of the offsets are touching, once the offset is applied, those areas will be welded together and it will not be an individual offset around each letter. So we're going to go ahead and hit apply. And we're going to add white to that and remove the line color on everything. So you have created a simple offset around your text. You can do this for images that you trace and detach. You can do it for shapes, you know, anything. You can put an offset on it. If you're wanting to create an outline effect, you can select the offset and the original text, go over to modify and subtract. Oh, I'm sorry, not subtract. Let's, because of um, the way the back is, let's just make it a compound path. So we're gonna right click and make it a compound path. And then now we have it where it's more of an outline. Now you can use subtract, but I did not group together that offset before I um, before I made before I did the subtraction. So if I were to go and put another offset, and then let's make that 0 0.05, and then apply. We're going to fill it with color and then I'm going to group it together. I like keyboard shortcuts, so I use Control G. It's Command G on a Mac, or you can right click and choose group, or you can use the group function up here, or you can use go to object and group as well. Now that that is grouped together, I can select it all and go modify, subtract, and it's going to cut it out. The one thing with doing it this way is I now have my letters individual. So if I wanted to modify them in any way, um, because they're now, um, they are now a, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? <laughs> they're now uh, uh, outlined, like you see here, the A and the H in that offset was just barely touching. If you don't want that effect and you want them to truly be individual, you would have to either decrease your offset or you can add a little bit of spacing between your letters to make sure that they don't touch. But this allows you to move them individually. The one over here that we made a compound path, it is one piece and there is no way to ungroup it. You would have to release compound path to have those be individual elements and then go in and select each individual letter and make it a compound path again to have them be individuals like we did with the subtract. So that's that. 
all right the other thing that you can use that for is the same thing you would you know create a shape and um offset it and then do a subtraction or make compound path that helps you to make rings or frames and things like that as far as creating a shadow if you have designer edition or above you can simply go to the shadow function which is at the top uh which is the circle that looks like a half moon and you're going to go to the last icon which is your shadow feature you're going to click on your object whether it is a clip art text a shape anything you're going to click on the middle one it's going to say dynamic shadow it's going to give you a shadow you can use the x and y axis to determine where you want that shadow to be or you can use pan and it'll give you this secondary um i already have one which is my center rotation but it gives you this white one and you can move that around you can also change the transparency of it to take it up make it lighter and also the color so it'll give you darker colors when you first click on it if you want it to be a more like a brighter color and not really a uh, offset or a shadow but just a you know a secondary color if you click down into the darker colors you're going to reveal the brighter color palette or you can put a color code in the um, hex code section so let's just say I went with F1C 40F and it will give me a yellow color. I can still take the transparency down on this. And if I wanted to be able to use this with other elements and group it together, you would release that shadow. That makes it to where there are now individual pieces. You're gonna undo and then I can group those together. And let's remove the line color. And so there's that. If you do not have Designer Edition or above, you can simply make an offset. Uh-oh, let's go like 0 0.0125. It's gonna be really small. You're going to hit Apply. Come over to your color palette and fill that color, fill it in with a color. I always like to remove my line color, but I'll do that afterwards. I'm going to group those together. So this time I use the group function at the top because my mouse was already near that area. I'm going to tab that offset to the, oh, let's click on that again. Let's tab that offset to the right and down, or I can go to the left and down and up. You know, whichever way I want to take this, I can do that. And then I would come up to the paint palette on this side and adjust my transparency. So you can do the same effect. It's just going to take a few more steps and just moving around the screen and around the program just a little bit more in order to create that same effect. All right, when it comes to shapes, we're gonna go ahead, go to our offset, and we can do round it, or you can make it corners. And we're gonna go ahead and apply, and just add color to that. All right, that's as easy as that to create offsets and shadows. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to leave it as a comment below. If you are, have not subscribed, hopefully you enjoyed the contents of this video and have decided to go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well as the bell. Also visit my second YouTube channel, Elite Prints and Creations with a K for videos on like live demos for creating shirts, sublimation, paper crafting, cups, adhesive vinyl, all types of crafts and visit me on um, Sillaholics Anonymous on Facebook. I do daily Q and A's and other helpful videos over there as well. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.